Nepal and Canada have been enjoying excellent relations ever since the establishment of diplomatic relations uh, 55 years ago. And uh, these relations uh, are not uh, limited to the political level but also have been extended to the people-to-people -people level and the institutional level, of course. I will talk uh, about uh, those uh, at a later stage during my present uh, this uh, uh, speech. Uh, so we have been, uh, Nepal has been uh, thankful to Canada for its uh, contribution to Nepal in Nepal's socio-economic uh, development endeavors for decades. Uh, the government of Canada has uh, supported us during the time of difficulty, like uh, we had uh, this in the aftermath of uh, the April 25, 2015 earthquake. Canada made a substantial contribution to Nepal. It, uh, it also supported to us uh, in our uh, reconstruction trial at a later stage. Uh, one important event that happened in 2018 was uh, a meeting between the Prime Ministers of Nepal and Canada uh, in uh, New York in September and uh, that uh, provided us a guidance on how we should move ahead in coming days. The same meeting, the two Prime Ministers also signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of a bilateral consultation mechanism and fortunately uh, the first meeting of the same has already been concluded and in the uh, had this meeting in uh, Ottawa uh, the same year, uh, the next month, in October 2018. So now what we are doing is that we are both Nepali and the Canadian sides are currently focusing on implementing the understandings reached between the two leadership, the two countries during the meeting of, between the two Prime Ministers as well as at the bilateral constitution mechanism. This has provided us a solid uh, uh, ground uh, in coming days and uh, importantly we also have established uh, this uh, Nepal Canada Parliamentary Friendship Group in Kathmandu as well as uh, Canada Nepal Parliamentary Friendship Group has been established in Ottawa it was established in October 2016 <coughs> and uh, so it's a very uh, good thing that uh, the interactions engagement is also uh, being made at uh, the level of uh, parliaments of two countries and we look forward to continuing that. So what uh, the government of Nepal is thinking of is that uh, we would like to bring the nepal Canada relations to a new height uh, and uh, by way of further expanding and consolidating relations on multiple fronts. Uh, so, in this context, let me take the opportunity to explain to you what is the priority of the government of Nepal. As you may have noticed that following the conclusion of the political transition after the promulgation of the constitution in 2015, the government of Nepal is focusing on social economic transformation of Nepal. As you may have also noticed that we have uh, uh, achieved this uh, 7.1 percent economic growth rate and every sector of Nepali economy is doing well these days. This reflects that the nation has moved correctly to the direction of uh, development as well as prosperity of uh, as a uh, federal democratic republic. <laughs> Decline of 
So we have been continuing this, this uh, occasion by sharing uh, the roles to be played by the both countries between Nepal and Canada and how to face the obstacles on in terms of trade, business and in terms of diplomatic relationships, in terms of the cooperation to be taken and given. So we have been highlighting these issues here in the forums and we are very happy that the top Delegates from the police, governments, Brigadier Dungana, His Excellency, Excellency Brigadier Dungana, and the Nepal, and the Canadian representative of House of Commons, Ikra Khalida, has been presented here. So, the former speakers, Dr. Dharil, has given the past uh, history and different upheavals uh, we have gone through since its establishment. Then, Purna Khalil has thought about the difficulties we are facing in terms of trade relationships, export and import, because he has been interviewing on it since. Especially, I mean, Nepal, you know, some of the things that are so important. Nepal, Canada, to some of the man, some of the Gubari man, is that we can take a decision to make a good development to Gubari man. I mean, you know, some of the people are doing it. I mean, you know, some of the people are doing it. I mean, you know, some of the people are doing it. I mean, you know, some of the people are doing it. I mean, you know, some of the people are doing it. I mean, you know, I Characteristics and all of that, Nepal and Canada share the you know, strength relation between two countries. Number one, Canada has a multiculturalism identity, whereas Nepal encompasses the characteristic of the multiple culture region. Number two, troops of the Canada, Nepal both have fought together in the First and Second World War, both contributed for the establishment of the peace. Number third, Canada and Nepal both are the member of the United Nations, and share a common view of the establishment of peaceful world. Committed on the character of United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Number four, reflection between Nepal and Canada is cordial. Break of the world world. From these officials firsthand, how much they, the impact of that training, uh, the expertise was on the country of Nepal and it was great to engage, to interact. I sit on the, the Justice and Human Rights Committee, so I deal with the Canadian Constitution on a very regular basis. Now, 55 years 
of Canada and Nepal uh, diplomatic ties have passed. It's a great accomplishment. And the relationship in these 55 years uh, has been quite vibrant, although very low key. Now, Canada, and I know a number of you spoke about the multiculturalism uh, and the multiculturalist uh, society that Canada is, uh, and how important that is to Canada. And I am of the belief that that multiculturalism uh, identity that we have as Canada is our strongest asset. Because what it allows us to do is that each specific part of the Canadian society has the ability to go abroad to their, their own ties to whichever homeland they come from and to, to create those relationships, to create those ties. And that positions Canada in a really good spot of, of being able to be good trade partners, of being able to be good humanitarian partners. Over the past 55 years, I can talk about the $470 million that Canada has, uh, has invested into Nepal uh, for, for humanitarian aid. But what I think is more important to talk about is the $14.8 million that Canada did trade with, um, with Nepal in 2017. Or the $13 million of imports that Canada received from Nepal. This is one yes. month there. Uh, one month, there's one month. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, for, for the year of 2017. So one month, one hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Oh. Thank you for correcting that. Okay. Thank you for correcting that. Um, the point is, I uh, on how important the people-to-people -people relationships are uh, in increasing trade between countries. And I see other countries in, in their advocacy, their development of business, their development of friendship groups and, and business councils where you take delegations from, from one country to another to help people explore. Uh, and that really stems from that people-to-people -people relationship. And, and in order for us to, to amplify that, in order for us to expand on that, we count on all of you and the, the diaspora here in, uh, in Canada uh, to help us to see what the opportunities are in, in Nepal. Uh, so I look forward to continuing to engage with you on that. A number of points that were raised, um, that talked about trade already. Tourism is, uh, is a wonderful opportunity in Nepal, absolutely. And then just as Canada is so very beautiful, I, I truly believe that Nepal is just as beautiful. And I look forward to visiting Nepal one day uh, and seeing how, how we can really build those relationships further because I, I really think that the more you open your doors to one another, uh, the more you really build that relationship of friendship and, and love and respect. Uh, you talked about the student direct stream of, uh, of international students. Uh, now currently there are five countries that are on, on that list. It's Canada, well, sorry, China, India, Philippines, Vietnam and Pakistan. Uh, and it would be wonderful to, to advocate to have uh, Nepal also on that list. Now Canada recently invested millions of dollars to, to attract international students into Canada as we look to grow our population, as we look to grow our number of skilled workers here in Canada. It would be wonderful to have a very intelligent, a very dynamic uh, Nepalese community to also be part of that conversation. And I'm more than happy to advocate on your behalf to make sure that Nepal is also included on the student direct screen. So I look forward to engaging in those conversations with you also. The people of Canada uh, to, to, to make each other prosperous. I think Nepal has a lot to offer to a country like Canada. And I'm interested in how we can continue to build bridges with a, with a wonderful country like Nepal. Uh, so thank you very, very much for having me here today. Thank you for bringing me here. And if any of you have questions, I'm happy to take them now. Yes, sir. Hey.